What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because I figured, you know what? It has been a long time since we've done a garden tour. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to take an early June garden tour. Let's go. So the first thing I want to talk about was the pear trees. Now, the pear trees are just doing incredible. They've already exceeded my, uh, my height plus my arms. They're just, they're easily 10 feet tall, beautiful, nice height, great, great green foliage, just love and life. So really happy about these. No fruit on them this year. Pear trees are, are kind of odd. They, they take a rest year. So one year they might produce a lot. Last year they produced a fair amount. This year they don't have any fruit on them. Next year they're gonna produce a lot. So if everything goes well, next year we're gonna have a lot of beautiful foliage for them to uh, produce fruit on. They've just grown so much this spring already that I can't be happier, honestly. Uh, all the pear trees, in that, for that matter, have done really well. Even the one we just planted, uh, right in the center there, doing really great. It's already put on about uh, six inches of growth. Great time for that, early spring. You just really wanna maximize the, that good growing conditions, uh, or you wanna maximize the good growing conditions before the hot and dry weather comes when they typically get stressed. So put on all the new growth you want right in early spring and then uh, get ready for the next year. So the apple trees are looking incredible this year, really loving everything that's been happening. It's gonna be an absolute bumper crop for apples. We just are loaded up with fruit. We have fruit here, fruit here, fruit down here, fruit there, fruit there. It's just hundreds of apples on this tree. Obviously, we'll have to come back and cull some of the fruit as they mature, but we don't wanna do that just yet because we're not sure which ones are actually going to set, which ones are actually going to start uh, enlarging, and which ones are gonna fall off. So we're just kinda of waiting for another, you know, five, six weeks or so before we start culling. But we will have to cull some fruit because it is thick on this tree. We probably have at least 100 to 150 apples on this tree, so definitely more than this tree can uh, sustain. But you know what, we're happy about it because this is one of the only things that will really produce a lot of fruit this year. Our other peach trees, as you'll see, are really not doing that hot from how cold of a winter we had. So this is actually a really nice, nice welcome site. But yeah, it took really well to the pruning we did in the fall. We pruned it up to shape, kind of getting it out in that kind of goblet formation so that it can host a lot of fruit and, uh, and it gets some good sunlight in the center. So that's awesome. This is the zucchini bed, really doing well. We've got a little bit of yellow foliage on some of the plants, but overall just taking off like a rocket. We just planted these in the ground about two weeks ago. They took about a week of, uh, of adjustment time and now they're just taking off like crazy. We've got some yellowing like you see here. This is just caused from the extreme wet season we had so far. Uh, they could probably use a little bit of a, uh, a refreshing on the, on the fertilizer, but cucumbers, they're taking off. They're doing so well, as you can see, just really taking off, producing like crazy right now, just getting ready to go into foot production, uh, but they're just starting to vine. So we're gonna get them, get them trellised up here. You can see they're already starting to produce their tendrils and even got a, even got a little female flower there. So that's gonna produce a nice little cucumber for us. There you go. And the cucumelons over there, cucumelons are doing great. Now when it comes to strawberries, it's going to be a year like we have never seen before. The strawberry beds are just so lush that every time I come out here, I feel like I'm just, I feel like I'm looking at something that belongs in a magazine. I've never seen a bed so full, so beautiful, and just so mounding with fruit. I mean, this is just incredible. Check this out. So right now we're still getting a lot of flowers. It's early season, but they are just loaded. And the flowers have fallen off on a lot of these and they're producing fruit like you would not believe. They responded really well to our feeding of our, of our compost tea, which you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. But they responded super well, pushed out a ton of new growth, a ton of new flowers. And I'm telling you what folks, you guys, this is just unreal how much fruit is in here. I mean, look, just look. This is like, this is not even, I mean, this is not even the half of it. Check this out, look at this. I mean, it's just unreal how much we're going to get this year. Like I said before, we expect fully to get about 10 pounds of strawberries per bed. We could even maybe get more than that. So this year, it's definitely gonna be a good year for strawberries. All right, in the potato bed, could not look better. I am so excited about what's gonna happen here. The, uh, the Idaho red that we planted is already flowering. I, don't, I have not checked 
many of the other plants, but the Idaho red is flowering. And that's a great sign because that means as soon as flowering begins, tuber production begins. We've had a really slight problem with the potato beetle. That's just something that happens every year. I'm not too worried. The Colorado potato beetle is something that here in Michigan we have, but they don't, there's not enough numbers to really wreak havoc. And so they can become a slight issue during hot weather and stuff when they can really multiply and, and uh, take over a patch pretty quickly. But at most, really all we get is just some damaged foliage, which does not really affect the plants all, all that much. So right now we're kind of just keeping an eye on it. We get asked all the time what we do about it. And the answer is we just, we just take diatomaceous earth and we dust them down really heavily with diatomaceous earth for about a week or two weeks. And then that typically uh, completely eradicates all the, uh, all the issues there. Because beetles, they have a hard exoskeleton and the diatomaceous earth gets underneath there. It forces them to molt and then they just dehydrate out in the sun. So they, they die because obviously they, they don't, they don't want to molt, but they have to prematurely. And so they don't have a really, uh, they don't have a mature skin underneath. So they just fry in the sun and that's a great way to get rid of them. So it's pretty hot today. It's pushing about 75 degrees. So a lot of the lettuce is a little sad right now, but in the early morning, this stuff is all perked up. Looks absolutely beautiful, but I'd prefer not to water right now because that's one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of gardeners make is they water when their plants look like they need it during midday. That's not a time to water. What you wanna do is you wanna water in early morning or late evening, preferably early morning, because that reduces the amount of, uh, the, that reduces the risk of mildew and molds forming on your plants. But you see here, these plants, are, they're just, uh, they're just kind of reacting to the hot weather. They'll perk up, but they look absolutely beautiful. We've harvested from these beds already about nine times, and we'll just take, take uh, some, some lettuce and then let it grow back, and as you can see, this is all stuff that we've already cut from and it's just growing back and doesn't even look like we, we harvested from it. But we've harvested from all of this lettuce at least uh, three or four times and a um, total of nine cuts and you really don't even notice. This is what we just harvested about two or three days ago and you can see here it's all just growing right back. So <laughs> you, you, don't really miss, you don't really miss much because it grows so fast. So that's, that's, our, that's our leaf lettuce bed. And then our head lettuce bed. Check out our head lettuce. Now we don't typically grow lettuce for heads because it's not that great on, it's not that great on space because you gotta wait for the whole head to form, but check it out. Check it out, that is a gorgeous head of lettuce. There's some tango in between, or not tango, sorry. Uh, it is the, uh, the Grand Rapids leaf lettuce. So we have the Grand Rapids leaf lettuce in between. It's forming a nice, forming a nice head there where it's, uh, it's actually more of like an iceberg style lettuce. So that's really cool. Nice, beautiful iceberg head there. It's the first time we've ever gotten an iceberg head because normally we just let them grow for their leaves. So for those of you that are wondering, this is the same type of lettuce here. This is the same iceberg, or uh, same Grand Rapids heading lettuce, or Great Lakes 118, my apologies. Great Lakes 118 heading lettuce. It's kind of like an iceberg style. If you let it go for leaves, it just looks like that. But if you let it form a head, it looks like that. <laughs> I just love how that looks. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And check out our garlic. Now, when I said that I planted the potatoes first in the garden, I'd kind of forgotten about the garlic, but the garlic technically was the first thing planted in the garden. We planted it last fall and we planted it in early October. And a lot of you uh, wanted to see what it looked like. So here you go, check it out. <laughs> this is the tallest our garlic has ever gotten. I mean, this stuff is like three feet tall. Absolutely incredible looking and uh, based on Based on how, ouch, man, I need some knee pads. I need some knee pads. <laughs> the, the new fresh mulch is sharp on the knees. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I've never seen garlic this tall before. This is just absolutely beautiful. And judging by the thickness of the necks on the garlic, we're gonna have some pretty huge garlic cloves this year. So I am really excited about this. We won't harvest these for another probably five, six weeks or so. We'll let them get nice and big and uh, let them start dying back. But uh, overall, so far, looking really good. Really, really good. Garlic is one of those crops, almost nearly impossible to kill. Just make sure you got good soil fertility and then uh, do really well. The thing you don't want is weeds. They compete very poorly with weeds. So if you want good, qual uh, good quality garlic heads, uh, make sure you keep them nice and weed free. We grow high intensity, so there's not too many weeds in here. I just picked out three or four this morning and that's about it. So really not that bad, but that's a great way to ensure good garlic heads. And obviously this spring has been a super wet one. Garlic doesn't mind. Garlic loves nice wet springs. So that just makes sure that you're gonna have even bigger garlic heads. So here's the cabbage bed. Looks absolutely amazing. Got lots of beautiful cabbages forming here. Got a, uh, a nice savoy cabbage forming. 
some other cabbages here. The tags are all buried, but somewhere in there is the tags for all these. They're looking great. We got the kale over here. It's just beautiful. Look at that beautiful purple stem on that. This is the, uh, the dazzling blue kale. Absolutely just, I've never seen anything like this. This is a dinosaur mixed with a red Russian. So you get the, st the vein of the red Russian, but the leaf of the dinosaur, just, inc just incredible, beautiful. We have this, is called fractal frills. Look how frilly and cool that, lead, that uh, kale is. I gotta change my, my ISO really quick. All right, there you go. So sorry about that. A lot of sun just kind of came out there. So this is fractal frills, absolutely beautiful kale. Uh, just, just loving that. And we got some more herbs interplanted over here. Swiss chard, beautiful Swiss chard here. Different colors of each kind, yellow, orange. We got some, uh, some pink, some ruby red magenta, parsley over there, and some Brussels sprouts over there. So just really, really loving this bed. It's got a great, great mix in here. I wanna show you the, the pak choy. Check out the pak choy. Oh my gosh, it's just huge. I mean, the pak choy leaves are gorgeous and just absolutely incredible size. So we're gonna cut all that up and either turn it into some uh, kimchi or stir fry that up. And check out the strawberry tower. This hanging strawberry tower looks absolutely beautiful, but we got some strawberries hanging. Look at that, I got some beautiful strawberries. Some more beautiful fruit there, looking great. Some of these are, are not producing yet, but some, some are producing. They survived the winter really great. And uh, even down here, oh, look at that. Got a ripe on the first strawberry of the year. First strawberry. And I save the best for last, and that is the tomatoes. So you guys are always asking me, how are the tomatoes doing? How are the tomatoes doing? Well, they're doing incredibly well. We're talking just loaded with fruit, you guys. And we're, I've never seen this much fruit this early. And we are just going for a gangbusters year for fruit production. We've got fruit here, we've got fruit there. Fruit is just going like crazy. I've got this uh, this pie pie tomato already rock and rolling. It's probably gonna be right by the 4th of July. Just unbelievable, just loving life. So really doing well. I'm gonna come through here and stake them up. That's the next project that we're gonna do, but just doing beautifully. I am absolutely blown away. This is the golden, this is the golden currant here. Got some beautiful currant tomatoes. These are as big as they're gonna get. Nice, super, super small tomato, but very productive and beautiful. And then here's one that I'm so excited about. This one is called the Red Centiflor. This one is actually the most productive tomato in the world. Those are all flowers. Every single one of those is a flower. Every single one of those will produce fruit. Just outrageous how much this thing produces. So we gotta come through here, pick out those little suckers there. But everything else, all flowers, all flowers. Red Centiflor, absolutely beautiful. Come over here to the world's smallest tomato. This is called the red currant tomato. This is as big as they get. This is the red currant tomato. The smallest tomato. It's otherwise known as a, as a teaspoon currant or a, uh, they call it, sometimes they just call them a teaspoon tomato. Absolutely beautiful. As you can see, just hilariously small, but they are beautiful, packed with flavor and uh, really looking good. I just got to stake them up. Like I said, that's the next project. But all the other tomatoes, doing great. Could not be happier with how they're looking. Just healthy and happy. One of the final beds here I was gonna mention, um, we got the, over there we've got the pepper bed. Really nothing to see just yet. There's just some peppers planted in there. They're not really taken off just yet. It's not been warm enough for them to really start growing like crazy. But we have here our, our cool season bed. This is kind of just finishing up. We got our peas rocking and rolling here. Peas are doing great. They're starting to trellis up. And then the uh, scarlet kale from last year, we got this to flower out. Survived the winter, one of the coldest winters on record, which is great. It means it's super hardy. It's a great strain to have here in Michigan. And we're gonna be saving seeds from this so we can continue the genetics out. And so this one, we're letting go to seed. We've got our arugula here. That's kind of going to seed. We're still picking from that. Over here, we've got some thyme, beautiful thyme, some Dragon's tongue arugula. Absolutely love that red, nice red leaf there. Check that out. Focus, focus. There you go. Got some nice red leaves on that arugula. It's beautiful. Spinach there, and also the uh, 
the lavender that we started from seed is growing beautifully. It's actually flowering. So really quick, I thought I'd share with you guys the pepper bed, just so you guys can see. You know, we don't always have the results that we want right away. A lot of you guys are messaging me saying, Luke, my, my peppers are so sad right now. I'm like, yep, so are ours. It's been a really cold, really wet season. Peppers don't love that, folks. Peppers really don't love cold and wet. So ours are struggling a little bit, and that's okay. We've got some, we've got some nice ones here though that are coming on, and, and that's okay. This is the Anaheim, so it's still got a ways to go, but you know, it's just one of those things. You gotta, you can't fight it. Just gotta roll with it. And uh, a little bit of fertilizer, a little bit of time, they'll be, they'll be back up and running. It's just been so, so wet. So we're just kind of taking these and just letting them go. But you know, there's, there's some good ones here. This one's. This one's hanging on, this one's doing really well. This is a nice lunchbox bell pepper, so this one's doing really well. But you know, it's, it's okay. If you get some good and some bad, you gotta take the good over the bad. You gotta be, you gotta be positive. So that's a, a nice Jubilee watermelon. We got some watermelon in here. This is a, a ghost pepper we bought just cause I, I wanted to try this pepper here and they took so long to germinate. I couldn't, uh, couldn't wait, I just bought a plant. But we also got some, some crimson sweet watermelons. We got some, this is a nice, beautiful artichoke here. We got some more watermelons over there, but you know, it's just just a little little smorgasbord of a bed. And check out the black currant. I mean, this thing is absolutely huge. I mean, this thing is the biggest black currant plant I think I've ever seen. It's absolutely massive. So check it out. I mean, this is me compared to the black currant plant. I mean, this thing is like pushing four feet tall. It's absolutely huge, and it's just loaded with fruit right now. All the fruits deep down inside. A lot of it, uh, a lot of it happened on, on last year's growth, but we pruned it back in the fall so it could produce all this new growth. And that's exactly what it did. It really appreciated it. So that's gonna be a future video. We're gonna talk about how to increase the fruit production on your currants and your, uh, your, um, your gooseberries because they really, they really produce well when you prune them. Oftentimes a lot of people don't prune them. They just kind of let them do their own thing. But if you can prune them, they'll actually either double or even sometimes triple their production because all this new growth now, that's gonna produce fruit next year. So we're investing in the future by pruning our plants and it's just incredible. Absolutely incredible how big that is. Coming down here, I just wanna show you guys real quick all the gooseberries is what I was talking about. Pruning, 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 folks. Just look at all the fruit, you guys. This is just incredible. We're losing some sun. Where are you at, son? There you go. <laughs> so look at all the fruit. Just incredible how much fruit there is on these. And that's because we pruned them last year. They, uh, they produced a bunch of new growth and that's what's fruiting this year. So that's beautiful. Absolutely loving this. This is gonna be a great asset. Also over here, check this out. Look at this. They're so heavy, they're falling over. Just look at that. Wow. There's so many, so many on this tiny little plant. And same thing with our currants. Folks, check out the currants. Look at how many there are in here. Just look at how many currants are on this. I mean, this thing is just absolutely laden with fruit. It's just unreal, absolutely unreal. So here's the ugly. This is one of the ugly. I think we might lose this peach tree. It is hanging on there by a hope and a prayer. It is just barely producing new foliage. And that's because we had one of the coldest winters on record. This peach here is only rated for zone six. Zone six or lower. But we thought, you know what? Let's try it, let's give it a shot. And for two years, actually three years, the weather was just fine, it was perfect, didn't mind it. We had weather that was, you know, zero degrees, wasn't that bad. That was like zone six weather. And then last winter came, and that was a wake up call. We had negative 18 for five days straight. We also had one of the longest winters that we've had on record where there was uh, weather below freezing well into April. And so we had weather that was just winter-like. And these right here, you can see the tops, all the tops like we talked about, the tops are just burnt. They're all sad. I gotta come through and prune them. But the nice thing, here's the silver lining folks. The silver lining is that there's about a 50-50 chance this tree's gonna pull out of it. Um, what happens is the, the root system gets so cold that all the, all the water in the roots ruptures and the cells rupture, 
and you lose a lot of your foliage, that's what happens. It's called flagging, and it can happen either from pests, which is not the case here, but it can happen from cold too, because the root system can only support so much foliage. There's a direct correlation to how much foliage can be, can be uh, sustained. And, uh, and so what'll happen is if it knows it can't send nutrients and water up to those top branches, it'll basically just hold it down, treat it like a, its lifeline and say, hey, I'm gonna maintain this lower foliage here. I'm gonna kill this upper foliage up here. And that's why all this lower foliage, it's doing better. It's doing a lot better now that we got some sun, some good, uh, some good rain, and we fertilized it. It's, it's starting to produce some green foliage. So there is hope folks, there is hope, but I might have to, I might have to prune off some of this, some of this uh, dead foliage here because I'm not sure in a week or two we'll kind of assess the damage but it's uh, definitely the worst part of the garden so far. One of the nice things though folks, one of the nice things is when you invest in trees that are a little more cold hardy, have better genetics for cold weather, you get this, you get this, look at this one. Now we didn't get any fruit because the fruit completely got frost bitten right off. We talked about that. I should have wrapped our trees in burlap but look at this, the tree doesn't even mind it. Look at this other one, this is the twin here. Look at this, just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's totally loaded up with foliage, all green, beautiful, not stressed at all. And uh, that's just because it's, it's a red haven, it's far more cold hardy than that peach tree over there. So really doing well. And this is our cherry tree. Our cherry tree's doing awesome. Check out the cherries. They're really doing well. We've got so much great growth on this tree over the winter. Uh, it, it did not get affected by the cold weather whatsoever. And it's just loving life, really loving life. So super happy with this tree here. She's got nice, dense foliage. Really love the fertilizer we put out in the fall and the spring. It's just doing awesome. So happy about this one. Also really happy about this peach tree here. Again, the ISO, man, sorry about that. The lighting, the lighting is changing by the minute, folks. There's just, <laughs> that breeze is kicking clouds through like crazy. So this right here is, uh, is a, a beautiful, it's called a, uh, Bell of Georgia, absolutely beautiful growth here, not affected by the cold at all. Here's the newest peach addition to the collection here. This is a flavor rich peach, doing really well, responding awesome to the uh, to all the fertilizer we put on it. Trifecta Plus for the win. Really love using Trifecta Plus on these trees. They're just something that after two or three months, after you get the plant uh, put in the ground, give it a little fertilizer once it's established, and they just seem to explode. This one's put on about six inches of new growth. All this is new growth, so really, really happy about that. And then the final thing that I wanna talk about are the plum trees. A lot of you have been asking how the plums have been doing. The answer is really great. In fact, this one here put on about a foot and a half of new growth since I planted it. Really took well to the fertilizer we gave it, just greened up nicely, grew out like crazy, thickened up its stem by about 15, 20% since we planted it. It's just doing great. So really, really loving these plums. This is a uh, superior plum here, or actually not a superior plum. This is known as a Stanley. No, superior. This is a, su that's a superior. <laughs> this one here, this one here is a Stanley. This is the Stanley. You can see here, less purple foliage, definitely different from this one here. So the Stanley plum, really doing great. In fact, this one just took off well as well. Uh, we got about, let's say about 10 inches of new growth on this one, really loving the fertilizer. So that's gonna be exciting. I'm, I'm super excited to see how these produce over the following years. Probably won't give us fruit next year. I think this is probably a two year investment, but uh, we gotta prune this back, get some good, get some good uh, growth going. But I wanted to get all the energy this first year into the tree and then next year we'll prune for shape. So there you go, there is a whole garden tour. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really do love these complete garden tours. It's so much fun to do. I love just showing you kind of what's growing, what's doing well, what's not, and hopefully teaching you guys something along the way. So hopefully that happened. But I appreciate, I appreciate you guys watching this longer uh, length video. Make sure you comment down below with how your garden's doing. And if you're using Facebook or Instagram, make sure you share pictures over there. Um, share pictures with us on Instagram, hashtag MIGardener so we can see them. And also make sure you go over to Facebook and just share the picture with us over there. We love to see what you're doing in your garden. We love to see what's doing well. We love to see what's not doing well because that is all about the journey. As a gardener, sometimes things do well and sometimes they don't, but it's all about being positive, moving forward and knowing that not everything will always go out as planned, but as long as you learn something, you grow as a gardener, which is all that matters. So, all right, I'll catch you guys on the next episode. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya.